Well, guys, welcome to Warden Law. We're here with our top three in uh, in the Micro Max category after two rounds of the season. Luke Millwood and Josh Cook for KR Sports and Austin Owen for uh, for Sam Pollock Racing. Luke, uh, we'll start with yourself as championship leader at the middle point of the season. How happy are you to be uh, to be first in the standings going into this weekend? Uh, yeah, I'm very happy because. Of course, you're leading, but there is also a lot more pressure on you, so other things to worry about, but other things all clear, so. What do you think has been the most important thing so far this year in terms of the performance that, I say, you've got your teammates in second place as well, the team feeling really good? Yeah, and uh, yeah, to be fair, I just feel like it's just like the most important part has to be just getting loads of, loads of, decent scores not getting one bad but getting all top scores so yeah and as you say that's that's what you've done so far this season what do you think is uh is the little bit that you need is there something that you're working on to to get that first final victory of the year um just looking at overtakes looking at moves that people haven't created yet and then actually doing it for ourselves and then winning out of it Fantastic. Thank you very much, Luke. Uh, we'll move to, to Josh Cook for uh, Joshua Cook for KR Sport. Joshua, a really good year for you, moving up through uh, through the ranks here into, into Micro Max. Uh, great result earlier in the season at the O Plate as well. Sum up for me, how has 2024 been for you so far? It's been great. We've had a few lows, but mostly highs. As a PF International was a very good round for you as well. How how did you find that uh, that weekend in Lincolnshire? Um, Is it just a good one? getting points on the board really. And what do you think of this this karting northeast circuit here at Warden Law? Is this one that you enjoy? Yeah, I enjoy it. I like the circuit. Fantastic, Austin. We'll uh, we'll move to yourself. Um, a big result last time in Scotland taking the win in the final. How did it feel to to get that first victory, not just for yourself at this level, but also for Sam Pollock Racing as a team? Uh, just amazing. Uh, amazing. It was a really big achievement. We move on to the, to the third round now. You sat third in the points. Do you think you've got the performance with you to to push these two drivers to your, to your side here? I'll make sure it's hard for them and really push. And how how important is it to have the, the support of your family as well? I know it's a very it's a very close family affair as you've raced through from Bambinos and now into uh, into Micro Max. He, uh, yeah, it puts lots of pressure on me, but it helps a lot. Fantastic stuff. Thank you very much, uh, all three of you. Uh, best of luck for the weekend, and we'll we'll see you out there on track. Gentlemen, we're here at Warden Law, our top three in Minimax 950, heading into this third round of the season for the Vera Tools British Kart Championships. Championship leader, Albie Friends, second place, uh, Finley Lines, and third, uh, Harry Taylor. Albie, if we can start with yourself, if that's okay. Uh, been a really good season for you so far, and, and Strawberry Racing leading going into Warden Law this weekend. Sum up for me the, uh, the first two rounds of the season so far. Um, well, PF was um, really good, I think. We got the setup and the engine right, so all I had to do was drive the best I could. And I think I managed to do that, and I got some good points from that. And then at Larkle, I think we struggled a bit on the power, so I tried to do my job and get the most points possible because like, it could be very crucial in the championship later on. Absolutely. You've, you've got a good level of experience from last year. A, a lot of you peers from Micromax last year are obviously, you know, you've moved up through the ranks together. The experience that you had in 2023, how much does that build you for, for 2024, do you think? Um, well, 2023, I was fine for the championship lead going into the last round. Um, I mean, I won it, but then I got an on-track penalty, so that spoiled it, really. But are you thinking that you might keep things the same for, for this year, You know, take what you learnt from last year or, or maybe change things a little bit? Um, yeah, I'm just going to use that experience to make it um, even better this year. 
Fantastic stuff. We'll, uh, we'll move to Finlay, Finlay Lines for Synergy Factory Team. Uh, second place at the moment in the Championship, Finlay. Um, in Coupled with the, the two rounds we've had so far, you had a, an amazing run at the O plate, taking the O plate at the start of the year. Not quite found the way to the to P1, though, so far in, in the finals this year in rounds one and rounds two. What are you looking at this weekend for, for taking that first win? Well, it's just got to be consistent. That's a long time to ahead. There's still like three rounds to go. Uh, PFI, we uh, didn't have the... Well, we just struggled a bit with uh, grip levels. And then a lot call, I bring it a lot of back when other people had other bad weekends. Uh, so this weekend, if we can just maintain uh, getting good points and beat everyone else as much as we can, we can hopefully take the championship lead by the end of this weekend. One of the really interesting aspects about the championship so far is is you know, the fact we've got three different teams represented here in in the uh, in the top three. It's very competitive in in minimax nine fifty. What what do you think about that? Well, it just shows that like <clears throat> it isn't just like one car dominating. It's a lot of like cards. It's all about like the driver's skill. Like there's a lot of cards can be up there at the top. Very good. We'll uh, we'll move to uh, Harry Harry Taylor for Dan Holland Racing. Harry. Uh, you've had some really strong results so far this season in terms of those point scoring stages quite often up in the in the top three um, how are you feeling ahead of this weekend um good really um first two rounds were re re really good um yeah I'm just hoping to score some more points in these next three rounds you were a little bit unlucky at, at Lark Hall. Uh, I think it was a, a top 10 finish, but not, not quite on the podium. How do you bounce back from a, a result like that? Well, you just got to keep on pushing, really. Like It's, it's up and down racing. So you, s sometimes you get a good result, sometimes a bad result. Y you just got to be consistent. And your overtaking has been really good so far this season, remembering back to the one that you did around the outside of, of Hairpin 1 at, at PF International. How do you work on that? Is there a lot of video footage that you review before the start of a weekend? Well, um, not not really. Um, you just got to read the moment, really. Like, if, if it's possible, you go, go, go for it. And if it's not, you got to just push and, and score some solid points. Fantastic stuff. Well... The three of you, best of luck for the uh, for the weekend, and uh, we'll see you out there on track here at Warden Law. Back here in the media room uh, with our top three in junior road tax after two rounds of this year's Rear Tools British Kart Championships, William Antrobus, Harry Bartle, and Harrison Whittakam. William, starting with yourself, championship leader going into this weekend, but let's take a, a step back to a few weeks ago, around a month ago in Scotland at Lark Hall. A perfect weekend for you, maximum points. You must have been delighted with the performance there. Yeah, I was delighted with the performance. It, it was very tough to pull off considering I've got Harry and Harrison as well. And then I've got the rest of the people like Jacob and Jack West who are very tough as well. But yeah, it was a very good weekend and I'm very happy to lead it. But it's about the long-term run, about how we do in the championship overall as well, because we've still got three rounds to go. But yeah, yeah, very good round. Team spirits seem really on a high at the moment. So with, with yourself and Austin Oman in, in one of the other classes, the long-awaited victory for Sam Pollock Racing in, in a final. Do you feel like a little bit of weight's off the shoulders this uh, this weekend, or is it back into the focus of uh, being championship leader? No, it's um, a bit of both, really, but it's about how you deal with it as well. That's the main thing. If you deal with it good, you'll get your head down and you'll go out and do your best. Like, But it's a little bit of weight continuing off Larko, considering I'm the championship leader and everything, but I've just got to get my head down and go, really. Last question for yourself. Well, this circuit, what are the similarities and differences to PF International and, and Larko where we've been so far this season? Uh, it's definitely a lot harder on the tyres here, but it's such a nice track to drive. It's fast, it's flowing, it's got technical sections. So, yeah. Good stuff. Harry, Harry Bartle for Strawberry Race and moving to yourself. Uh, great starts to the season, won the O plate, really strong at, at PF International as well. Some difficulties at, at Lark Hall, if, if that's fair to say. How are, you, how are you looking, do you think, going into Warden Law this weekend? Uh, obviously, last weekend we had a good win and the pace is very, very strong. 
So uh, it's going looking good. Uh, but the first two rounds, the uh, first round went well, uh, second in the championship, and the second round didn't really go to plan. Had a few bad uh, races, but it uh, wasn't too bad to stay second in the championship, so it's looking good. At the end of 2023, these classes were all about DHR. You're not the only strawberry racing driver who's in amongst the top three uh, within your respective classes. What have you been most proud of in terms of the work that you and the team have done so far this year? Uh, obviously, my first season back in road tax, and um, we had a good start at the O plate. So the team did a great job, and I continue to do a good job. Uh, always working back at the workshop to get the get engines, and uh, the team's doing well, so looking good. Harrison, moving to yourself, uh, it's been a very competitive season for yourself so far at Argenti. I think a bit of a roller coaster. Uh, you've ups and downs, but uh, given the trend that you've seen so far this season, this this should be a good one for you this weekend at Warden Law. Yeah, Warden Law has always been a really fast track for me. I mean, I've shown my pace last year throughout British Champs and UKC. Hopefully, I'll bring it now. I didn't. I missed the pre-round, which was last weekend, which was UKC, but hopefully, I'll be on it now this weekend. Really interesting team dynamic um, that you've got in in Argenti Motorsport. You are the lead driver, of course, in the team uh, in the point standings. Do you think this is a really good opportunity for you this weekend to assert assert your leadership over the rest of the Argenti drivers in this class? Well, we always we always try to work together, and um, we always want to. I want Tom's here right behind me, only like ten points behind. So hopefully, I'll keep my lead. Well, I want to try lead the championship out this weekend. I want to try get the win because it's my strongest track out of all five. But yeah, we'll just have to see. Unfortunately, you weren't able to celebrate the victory at, at PF International for, for the reasons that uh, that, ad, that event ended. Um, how special would it be for you to, to win, not only win this weekend, but also be able to, to celebrate it fully? Yeah, it feels yeah, feel so much better. I mean, at PF, I just felt a bit, didn't feel really real, uh, real, kind of felt a bit fake, but hopefully this weekend we'll just get it, we'll get it proper. Fantastic stuff. Thank you for your time, gentlemen, and uh, best of luck for this weekend. We're back here in the media room with the uh, the top three after two rounds of this year's Vera Tools British Kart Championships in Senior Rotax. Callum Bradshaw starting with himself for Strawberry Racing. Uh, great to have you back. This is the first time we've done one of these interviews in 2024. First question, what is it that brought you back to the Vera Tools British Kart Championships this year? Yeah, it's, um, it's nice that it's sort of coming along now, sort of like the Alpha Live and everything, um, how you boys are doing it. It's um, I think it's really good for the for the motorsport and for the people. Obviously, it's hard for people watching to sort of get an idea. So by you doing all this, um, similar, obviously, to Formula One in like your press, press conferences and everything, I think it's really good. But um, yeah, no, getting back to your point um, about what brought me back, honestly, just a bit bored, <laughs> uh, to be honest, um, on the sidelines in 23. Um, I just thought, you know what, if I'm still young and I can still do it, so I'll only regret if I don't go again. Um, and like I said, I think this is my last one. Um, but yeah, that's, that's why I'm back. You've raced at a Euro level. You've raced at a world level as well. How, how does the Virtual British Kart Championships compare to those? How does it prepare you? What's, what's it like to race him? I, I think it's probably one of the hardest, to be honest. Um, in Europe and obviously the World Championships, a little bit different. Obviously, it's a one-off race. Um, but like European is a flat, fast flowing, um, sort of single file, um, based on pace, I would say more, more often than not to who wins. Mm. Um, whereas the British championships, technical tight tracks, um, and, and you have the, the front guys now in this are really strong. So, um, I have my work cut out definitely. And this weekend as well, Warden Law, what are we thinking going into it? Yeah, really strong, um, to be honest. Uh, last weekend, the pace was really, really good. Um, and I can't see it being any different this weekend. Uh, same same drivers. Um, just had a, a mishap in the heat last week, um, which hindered our probably maximum performance. Um, but no, the pace is looking really good. Thank you very much, Callum. McCauley, moving to yourself. Uh, how have you found the step from juniors into seniors this year? You, you seem to have taken it like a duck to water, but I'm sure it's been uh, anything but easy. Yeah, obviously it's a bit different, uh, different drivers, uh, different tyres, and then the engine's pretty much the same, but it's got to adjust your driving style to the tyres. Obviously, you've got to run around the corner a lot more, uh, get the maximum out of tyre, really. At the start of the year, you had that amazing O-plate victory. How did that feel going into the season? Do you, th do you think it's given you that confidence through the course of the first two rounds of the year? Obviously, it's given me confidence. I mean, I've won against some of the best drivers in, in Britain in senior, so... Yeah, I'm really confident going into the rest of the championship. 
and the the continuation of the working relationship with with DHR as well. How important has that been in the in the transition into the seniors? Yeah, they just they, they just make me feel like uh, like I'm at home. So uh, yeah, it's good. Fantastic stuff, Guy. We'll, uh, we'll move to yourself, Guy. Third place in the uh, the championship going into this weekend. Some really strong point scoring throughout the course of the year so far. How how has it gone from your perspective? Uh, it's been okay. Qualifying's been a big issue this year. Uh, I had a tire problem at round one, which means I think qualified thirty or so, and then I was thirty eight for Arkle. So far in the finals, I had a third and a fourth. So it's just been recovery drives, but obviously it's not what you want for points, but third in the championship after best qualifying being like 32nd I think this year so I guess you could say that's quite strong. Bit of continuation from last year's calendar as well that we're here at Warden Law again obviously it's a much later round in the year uh, when we were here in 2023. How much data do you have as a team obviously you run your own team in, in Guy Cunnington Racing do you take from previous um, visits to in, into this weekend? Yeah, I think uh, it's definitely tricky, especially living like seven, eight hours away from here. Mm. We don't get a lot of track time here. And when we are here, like as not being one of the big teams, like the two next to me, it's very limited data and setup. Um, trying to find out for myself is only sort of one, one or two carts to to learn from through the weekend. So, I mean, that's not seemed to hinder us on, on pace so like at all really at the minute. But I think it probably just takes a little bit longer to to sort it all out but yeah it's, it's going okay you've won this championship before you know what it takes to to get that number one plate where do you think you're going to be looking for a, a little bit more performance this weekend um i just just qualify and if we can qualify a bit better um two problems that one one was my fault really and the other one wasn't so a little bit of luck and for me to get it right and qualifying would be nice but yeah like you say won it before so it's not a new thing to to do again it's just trying to obviously repeat what what i've done a couple of years back so that's the obviously the goal fantastic gentlemen thank you for your time best of luck for uh, this weekend and we look forward to seeing you out there on track